Hello, today I'm going to show you how I brought this Procreate drawing into Mental Canvas to create a spatial scene. So right now I'm in Procreate, as you can see, and I have uh, five layers here in the layers panel. And what I'm going to do is export these layers as PNGs so I can import them into Mental Canvas. I'm just going to save these images to my photo library. So I'll just open up photos here, and there they are. And you can always double check that the import worked by tapping on the image and it should turn black if it has transparency. So I can see that this worked. And now what I'm gonna do is open up Mental Canvas and bring these images in as a layer stack. So I'm gonna go over to Mental Canvas, this is an earlier version, and I'm just gonna make a new scene. So I'll discard that and create a scene. And I'm just gonna choose the blank template here and give it a name. And now we have an empty scene in Mental Canvas where we can import those images. So I'm just gonna go into the layers here and tap on the image icon, and then I can select the images. So I can select multiple images here by just selecting one by one. On iOS 14, you're just gonna select a group. On iOS 15, you can actually select the order. So that's something to note. And once I have them selected, I can just tap on add here. And as you can see, it comes in as a layer stack. So you can see they're all aligned just like they were in Procreate or whatever drawing software you use to create your, your layers. So I can actually choose if I want to import layers or canvases. In this case, I'll just use layers. So I'm gonna tap on confirm up top. And now you can see that they've been imported and the layers here. So those are those same images that we saw in Procreate and it's totally flat like that. So what I wanna do is start taking these layers and using the projection tools to create a spatial scene in Mental Canvas. So the first thing to do is kind of find our key point of view that we wanna preserve throughout the projection process. So to do that, I'm just gonna save a view that I wanna preserve. So in this case, because it's kind of a square scene and I'm looking at it in a, a landscape view, I have these big white borders here. So uh, instead of that, I'm just going to set my aspect ratio to be a square. So you can see here, I'm just setting the aspect ratio in the bookmarks bar so that I have these boundaries on my scene um, on the sides. And that just fits this particular piece a little better. It depends what you're working with. So when I'm happy with this view, I can tap on this camera icon right here, and then I can always uh, easily get back to that view. So if I go into viewing mode here, I can get right back to that view. So this is my key point of view that I'm going to be preserving. So I'll go back to the layers here and what I wanna do is start by hinging up the ground plane. So to do that, I'm gonna go into drawing mode and then I'm gonna go into selection so I can select the ground. And you can just tap on the ground and that will work. But if you have a more complex image and it's hard to select the layer, there are a few other things you can do. You can always uh, lock the other layers so that you can't select them like that. Also, if I accidentally selected a layer that I don't want, I can use this plus minus sign. So I can use the minus sign and deselect that layer. Okay, so we have our layer selected and what I wanna do is angle the ground plane up so it comes up at an angle. So I'm gonna use the hinge tool here. And first I'm gonna set the axis. So uh, if you haven't used the hinge tool before, there is a hinge video to learn a little bit more about that. But in this case, the axis should just be along that, that ground plane. Um, and then I'm looking at the preview window up here so I can see uh, what I'm doing. And as I pull this bubble here, you can see that the ground is getting hinged up into place. So I'm setting that angle along that axis. And when I'm happy with the position of the ground, I'll tap confirm. And now, as you can see, the ground is its own canvas like that. So now what I wanna do is go back to drawing mode return to that key point of view and bring some of the elements in the foreground up into place. So again, I'm gonna go into selection here 
Uh, if you ever find that you uh, zoom in when you're selecting and now you're in the wrong point of view, there's this little preview window here that will bring you back to your starting point, which is really helpful for projection like this. So I have the ghosts selected here and I wanna bring them into the foreground. So I'm going to use the projection tool like this. And now again, I'll use that preview window to make it larger and I'm just gonna look from the side here and as I pull down, you can see the ghosts are being brought into the foreground. But what's really key, just like all projection, is that they look the same from this point of view, even as I'm adjusting their position here. So when I'm happy with the position of the ghosts, I'll tap confirm, and then I'll go back to viewing mode and you can see that they're now on their own canvas. So I'm gonna repeat that process again. I'll go into drawing mode, I have the original layer stack selected, so it has the house and the trees. And I'm gonna go into selection and select the trees. And then I'll use projection here and bring the trees into the foreground. Like this. And when I'm happy with the position of the trees, I can tap confirm and again, take a look at the scene. And if I wanna get back to that view, I could always tap on that original bookmark again. Okay, so uh, last thing I wanna do is just uh, adjust the background a little bit more. So again, I'm going through that process. I'm gonna select the background this time. I'm going to project that into a little further back. So as I push here, you can see that's moving back into place. And now I have the house and the background. They're all on their own canvases like that. So I'll go back to that view. And if I'm happy with the position of everything at this point, I can start saving views to create my fly through. So to do that, I'm just gonna kind of take a look around and save key views. And in a scene like this, it's really effective to kind of zoom in and move through the scene. So if I went over here, it would kind of break the effect, right? So I'm just gonna stay uh, more or less oriented from this point of view and kind of move into it like this. Of course, it depends what effect you're trying to create, but in this example, I'm just gonna kind of zoom in like that and save some views. So I'm just tapping on the camera icon to save views. And then I can return to the original point of view and tap on the bookmark again and drag that to the end. So that way it'll return to the same spot where it began. And then I can hit play and see how it looks. And what's really nice here is that these ghost women have transparency to them. So you can kind of see, see right through them, which is a, a really cool effect. So that is a really quick example of what you can do with just five layers. And then I could continue to go in and edit this. So for example, maybe I want to hinge this gate a little bit so I can see that it's swinging backwards. So to do that, I'll go into the canvas with the gate and I'll use the selection tools again. This time it's not already separated into a layer. So I'm gonna use the lasso tool to select just a portion of that layer. So I'm gonna use the lasso tool right there and I can go in and select this gate. And I can use that plus minus sign again if I wanna sort of adjust that. You can be as precise with it as you'd like. And I'll use that preview right there uh, to get myself back to my original point of view. And then I can use uh, the hinge tool to hinge the gate. So I'm just gonna use that hinge tool this time I'm gonna select, I'm gonna set the axis where the gate and this post meet. So it's kind of a vertical axis right there to hinge it from the post. And then I'll look from, from this angle here to see what I'm doing. And as I hinge here, you can see that the gate, I'm just doing a really subtle little move right there. So you can see the gate is getting hinged backwards a bit. And then I'll go back to viewing mode and you can see that that created kind of a nice effect there. So there's a lot more you could do with this scene, but uh, I'm gonna leave it at that for now. And I can hit play. 
and see how my fly through looks. Okay, so when we're happy with our scene, we can go up here and export and start. And I'll save the video. So that's a quick example of how you can go from a layer stack into a spatial scene. Something to note is that right now it's limited to five layers at a time. So if you have an image with more than five layers, you can always uh, import those layers in batches. And thanks for watching. We're excited to see what you create.